All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm David Malcolm. I work at Red Hat on GCC, focusing on diagnostics, um, which is what this talk is about. I'm going to be talking about uh, user experience improvements I've been making uh, for GCC 15 uh, for in terms of nicer looking text output. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, serif output, which is a machine readable format for diagnostics. Various internal improvements I've made that make it easier for, uh, for developers of GCC to write new warnings, which might be of interest if you're a GCC developer or work on GCC plugins. I've been working on taking all this diagnostic code and making it available to other projects as a shared library using uh, called libdiagnostics so that people don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I'll also talk about some of the more out there or experimental things that may or may not land for GCC 15. So the first thing uh, I talk about is I took a look at how GCC's terminal output, the, the color scheme. So I forgive, forgive me if this is a bit of a bike shedding discussion. Um, so looking at GCC 14 and earlier, here's a couple of, uh, of uh, screenshots from uh, Compiler Explorer. I've got URLs um, on all the slides, which are not yet available, I'm afraid, but uh, I'll upload them uh, after the talk. Um, and so here at the top, we have a warning about a mismatch in a format string where you've passed in percent i and you've um, are you passing a const char star, but asking a percent i to consume it, which is wrong. And here there's a, uh, a type def. Uh, it's a, two type defs that are being added together and they're structs and the C comp compiler doesn't, it doesn't know how to handle that, so that's a type error. And the coloring here is a bit random and haphazard. Uh, it happens that um, there is a color chosen for the severity. So the top one, it uses purple for the severity of warning. And the other one, it uses red for the, the, the severity error. And it happens to use, for the first range in the source code, it uses the severity. And then it sort of alternates between green and dark blue for other labeled ranges in a diagnostic, which is a choice, uh, I suppose. Well, it's not really, it's sort of happened. Um, and so for GCC 15, I thought, well, what should these things look like? Is there a better way of doing it? Um, and so what I've done is I thought a lot of the time with a diagnostic, you have two different things that you're trying to draw a contrast between. So for example, in the top warning, you have, well, what is the, it's a type mismatch. So you have what is the type that you are expecting versus what is the type that you got. And it's sort of the expected type versus the actual type. And here I have, uh, you'll notice that in previously, the message of the warning, where it's saying format percent I expects argument of type in, but argument blah, 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 blah. Um, you, I've now got color in there, so the format percent I is colored green, expects argument of type int star, which is also colored green, and you'll see that in this quoted source, the bit that corresponds to the percent I is also colored green, whereas argument two has typed const char star is in, the const char star is in dark blue, as is the part that is, um, uh, corresponds to that in, in the source code. So the idea being there are two different things here that I, we can use color to, uh, to group and contrast between so that the eye is drawn to, oh, that's the, the sort of intness part of the problem and that's the const char star part of the problem. And it sort of also highlights the relationship between the, the message and the source code and the parts within the source code that are uh, of those properties. And again, and going on to the, the, the bad binary operation, again, the, the two things that I'm contrast, well, I'm highlighting here are the, the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the infix plus um, operation. And so you'll see that the, we have its S, which happens to be a type def, and you see the S and the thing that it's a type def of are highlighted in green, as is the left-hand side. And similarly, the uh, and T and struct T, those things are highly get the dark blue colorization. So I think this is a nice 
it's, it's maybe it's subtle, but it's uh, a nice way of sort of grouping and contrasting in our messages. From an implementation point of view, there's a new, uh, in the GCC subdirectory, diagnostic highlight colors.h. And we have, um, there's a basically highlight, they're, they're sort of symbolic names to avoid you having to sort of spell out what you mean. So in one of these, Type mismatches. We when inside the implementation, we can talk about highlight colors colon colon expected versus highlight colors actual, and it's very clear what you mean uh, inside the implementation. Uh, similarly, left hand side and right hand side. And I implemented this and ran into a problem, which is that it was implementable using GCC's existing internal API, but it was horrible uh, because you had, the, the messages were like a, a dense map, mass of percent this, percent that, percent that, and that, and met lots and lots of arguments, and you're trying to figure out which one corresponds to what and so on. Um, so we sort of ran into, well, I want to have, be able to, in my formatted printing, be able to say, this isn't just a type that I want in quote marks, this is a expected type that I want in quote marks, and this is, not, this is an actual type that I want in quote marks. So I sort of want the idea to be able to carry more, maybe, maybe semantic information about things. And so traditionally, well, we can add a new format code to uh, the pretty print format thing inside GCC, but we're running out of letters for percent whatever. Um, it, 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 it's basically, I had to kind of trawl through all the different front ends, which have their own, they sort of a base level of format codes. And, um, and then there's front end specific ones that consume other ones. And so then, um, what, if you do add a new uh, format code to our pretty printing routines, you have to teach dash w format about it so that it knows how, how to type check it. And finally, um, just the formatting code is um, increasingly convoluted, and I talk about that in the, later in this talk, um, how, to, how I've simplified that. Um, so um, what I came up with was the, the sort of the one format code to rule them all, uh, which is percent %e, which is an element, and it basically it consumes a, a pp element star for um, var arg, um, which is actually a pp markup in the namespace element star um, for, through a type def. And the idea is the element inside pp markup is an abstract base class that has virtual functions for interacting. Well, it has a single one, which is um, add to phase two, and it takes a markup context. And the idea is there are operations in kind side context for interacting with the formatting subsystem saying, this is how I print myself when, I, when, the for, when I'm being, handling a, for, when we're doing a formatted string print, for example, inside a, di a diagnostic. Uh, and so that sort of isolates it in one place. Um, and yeah, this is rather uh, wordy because my variable names are rather long and I've got namespaces. But here's an example of a, um, this is a note inside the C front end where you have a type mismatch where you're complaining about, um, I've got a function call and a particular parameter is of a type that conflicts with the, the, the argument at the call site, say argument two is wrong for parameter two of a declaration of the function being called. And so we make, um, we make our location and you'll see that um, at the particular location we're complaining about, which is the, the, the location of the parameter itself in the declaration. And we can, you'll see I've added a highlight colors expected, saying that I want to highlight, in, when I quote the source, I want to highlight the, um, uh, highlight that using that color, part of, um, color scheme. And then I'm gonna, if you look at the bottom, there's an inform expected percent %e, but argument is of type percent %e, and I'm passing in a pair of element stars, which I construct in the lines above. And the nice thing here is these are C++ objects, so it's, it's type safe in the sense that a element expected type is constructed with a, a tree that has to be a, a type. Um, and all that the, you know, the nasty, not particularly type safe format string 
consumption code has is, well, it just has to be a PP element star and they'll call the virtual function. So that's all kind of covered. And you have a quite nice way of just any time you want to add a new formatable thing that has to interact with the formatting subsystem, you can just do it this way. And it makes it very easy to inject this will print this as a type, but we'll colorize one of them uh, using one, the expected colorization and the other one as the actual colorization. And so in terms of what this looks like, this was the GCC 14 version of this. Uh, and yeah, the, the thing that the, it's the note as part of this, the expected constant char star, but argument is the type int. Um, and it's highlighting the param of the, the decal of the thing being called. And in GCC 15, you'll see that, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's highlighting things. One interesting thing about this example is you'll see that the colorization can be done at the level of the group of messages. Uh, so you'll see that in the quoted source and part of the error, the, the type of the, the argument at the call site is colored in dark blue and highlighted int. Uh, whereas the, uh, the param there is, that, is, is highlighted in green to mark the, the, um, the expected. But you'll see the as of type int, that's in blue, so that that matches visually the, um, the quoted source from the, the error. So within any particular group of messages, you can establish a consistent colorization to sort of visually group the related concepts. So I've, I went through the C and C++ front ends uh, for basically things like type mismatches, um, bad binary operations, um, and things like that. And I gone and implemented this for GCC 15 for, for the C and C++. If you are the maintainer of a GCC front end and would like to implement this sort of thing in your warnings, to, you know, talk to me if you like, or please implement this and I can help. So um, that's the colorization improvements. Um, next, uh, I've been making some improvements to how we, you wanted ASCII art, you're gonna get ASCII art. Okay, um, well actually box drawing characters, which are Unicode. Um, so in, since GCC 10, any diagnostic can have a diagnostic path associated with it, which is a list of events describing a execution path through the code, possibly in, into procedural. And here's an example of a warning from the analyzer. It's warning about a, a double three, uh, a very, very trivial one. Um, and it's and how we, how we would print it in GCC 14. And you'll notice there's this kind of weird blue line or cyan line on the left-hand side, a border. What that is, is to try and show the interprocedural calls and returns, like what is the stack depth? We're calling into this frame, we're returning from it. But it's completely redundant here because this is purely in, intraprocedural. And so for GCC 15, for purely intraprocedural paths, I eliminate them. So it's a, it makes the warning that much tighter. I've also, you'll notice on the event two in the path, you'll notice it's gained a little warning emoji, um, which, uh, and before you will scream, yes, it's disableable, and uh, if you're in ASCII only, it'll, yeah, or you, you can turn off emojis. Um, uh, and that, that highlights, uh, but basically there's a flag on on events to say, um, the, if they're flagged as danger, they will get a um, warning emoji. Uh, and that makes it through into the machine readable output. There's a, there's a property in, uh, in Sarif for you can add um, nouns and verbs to events. Um, and, uh, the, uh, and, the, and the analyzer happens to set that typically on the final event in an execution path. Um, here's one of those interprocedural things I mentioned before with calls and returns, and there's the, can you spot the difference between GCC 14 and 15? Is it better with or without? <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, basically the difference is, if you look at the bottom, maybe at the bottom here, this is pure ASCII, and now it uses box drawing characters. Um, if and of course, you can turn that off and go back to just using ASCII. There's options for all of this. Um, Dave, mm. how, how do you control turn these things off? Is it 
Only on command one. Yeah, there is a command. Okay, the question, how do you turn off these things and control these things? There is um, a dash F diagnostics dash text art dash char set equals um, that can be ASCII, Unicode, or emoji. Emoji, um, which is basically, um, this I added in GCC 14, and I think it defaults to emoji. Uh, ASCII is pure ASCII, Unicode is use ASCII plus some box drawing characters, and emoji is add the, the warning emoji. Um, I'm not adding all the full, like, um, yeah, we, we, yeah. Shouldn't this come from the environment? Yes, and, and the default is affected by the environment as well. I refer you to the source file, gcc dash, I think it's in diagnostic colors.cc because it's similar to how we scrape the like, capabilities of the terminal uh, if we're connected to a terminal for whether we should enable colorization for um, control codes. So more ASCII art here. Um, so GCC 14 gained an um, analyzer infinite loop warning for detecting some kinds of infinite loop. And uh, this shows, and it might, basically you have to look at the numbers and figure out what the control flow is. So you can event one, then event two, then event three down there, then event four, then event five. And this can be increasingly difficult when you have more and more complicated execution paths. So for GCC 15, I've added the ability to show control flow edges in the paths. Uh, I'm not convinced that on this example it's an improvement in usability, but here you see event one, and that's actually got the emoji because that seemed the best place to put the warning thing. Infinite loop, when you go here and we follow this control flow um, into, the, into the loop, and essentially, I try and consolidate events into sanely printable runs of source code that we can show um, edges between. And we, what we have here is a looping back, so you can sort of see it from the line numbers go back. Um, so I'm not convinced on this is the best example to, to I should have chosen for this, but uh, it at least shows the capabilities that have, I've added for, for visualizing control flow edges in the ASCII art. Uh, well, it will be ASCII, uh, in this case it happens to be um, box drawing characters because that's what um, uh, Compiler Explorer supports. Okay, in GCC, I have 14. Well, the, there's been a recent development to terminal control codes where it allows you to, as well as colorization, express URLs and provide links in the terminal. And we started, at, uh, we added that for the, the warning when it says um, dash W whatever. It, that becomes a clickable hyperlink to the documentation. And that's been in GCC for a number of releases now. In GCC 14, I extended that so that any time you mention a command line option in quotes, using like, the, for example, the percent QS format string inside one of those, you know, error at or warning at, there, there's basically a hook, a URLifier, that looks at these and says, do I know about this thing? If so, I'll make a URL for it and just automatically inject it. So for GCC 14, any basic, well, almost any, because sometimes there isn't a good um, URL to use. But um, any time you mention an op and a command line option, in a G is, or any time a command line option is mentioned in a GCC diagnostic, it will give you a hyperlink to our, uh, in the terminal to uh, the documentation of that warning. Now, internally, um, we have to basically scrape, I have, there's a Python script that scrapes the result of building the HTML documentation and, uh, and then generates a lots of dot, dot, dot URL files, if I remember right. And uh, I didn't want to put a dependency on make HTML really, really early in the build for something that only happen is needed the, the, for the rare times when you're adding a new option or documenting an option that you should have documented. And 
And so there's a manual step, make, regenerate, opt URLs. And uh, then there's continuous integration that will complain if you, thanks Mark, um, that, will, uh, that will complain if you forget to do this. Uh, and, but it will send you the patch uh, that, uh, as well. Well, it'll, it's fairly trivial to fix, but it might be annoying, I don't know. So for GCC 15, I've got a patch that basically, um, and which, proposed, which sort of does the same, but it extends it as well as command line options, it's compiler attributes. So here we have a warning about attribute access, read, write, two, three, blah, 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 blah. And you'll see that now not only is the dash, well, it's probably not very legible, it's the dash w attributes uh, URLify to a link to that warning. It's not particularly necessarily a useful warning because what you really want is the documentation about um, attribute access, which is now, you know, there's a URL to the docs about that attribute, or at least if we apply this patch, which I think is a nice usability win, because that's what you kind of really want to know about when you're for, in this situation. Uh, so I've got a patch. It adds another manual step, but any time you add a new attribute, you have to regenerate this uh, data file that has, here are the URLs, in, or the, the relative URLs within our generated documentation. Um, and so that would be another step for GCC maintainers who are adding new attributes to do. And it would be um, also, um, they're not unique. For example, there are nine, I think the record is 19. There are 19 different URLs in our documentation for attribute interrupt because there's lots and lots of different target specific uh, versions of the documentation for interrupt because I, th I think there may be, uh, J Jason. And also attributes that apply to types and functions and variables. That as well. I totally forgot about that. So you have, I don't have a plan for how to fix that. <laughs> uh, what, what I was going to suggest is I, I can add a new target hook where you can query the target and the target will say, this is my documentation versus, you know, AR64s versus x86 or whatever. But yeah, I need a, that I need to think about. Uh, so that's sort of discussed the sort of the, the user user facing sort of the textual output uh, improvements that uh, are mostly apart from that last one already in shrunk for GCC 15. For um, as of GCC 13 onwards, we've also gained the ability to emit diagnostics in a machine readable format called SARIF which is the static analysis results interchange format that um, is a yeah, industry standard, it's JSON-based format, uh, designed for the output from static analyzers and to be able to catch, capture um, fairly rich data about, for example, things like what the execution path that's predicted is, potentially even um, multi-threaded and um, execution paths are expressible. And yeah, you can do all kinds of fun things like say, in this self-extracting exe file, there is a zip file, and inside that zip file, there's this file, and inside here, there's an elf file, and inside this elf section is a virus, um, and, and report things like that. So it's got some pretty rich vocabulary for describing things you might want to talk about in a static analyzer. But also, in fact, um, just in general, for SARIF 3, uh, I was going to say, actually, we hope to, I'm on the SARIF standard committee, although I haven't only been there for about a year. Um, the plan is to change it from being the static analysis results in interchange format to the, we had a total bike shed discussion, on, it'll be the system analysis results interchange format, because so that we can handle things like dynamic testing, uh, fuzz testing, and so on. So potentially, the, say the output from Valgrind could be you could use uh, Serif, but there are some issues we need to resolve with that um, because we've already got a pretty rich vocabulary for expressing things about source code and things about binary artifacts and all of that. So yeah, I, I added support to GC. CCC 13 for outputting diagnostics in SARIF form. And I've been making various improvements since. For GCC 15, I've done a lot of work on the SARIF uh, output code. Uh, there's lots of new metadata. So, for example, it captures the command line argument 
when the invocation of CC1 started and finished with timestamps, um, where what's your working directory? There are things like the, those sort of labeled ranges of source code that you would have seen on the slides before. Uh, that's now captured uh, in the diagnostics in the, in the serif output. Uh, GCC has will emit things like in file foo.h included from here in file bar.h. There's a problem, and you'll see that in the textual output. That's now captured in the serif output as well, that, the sorts of chains of includes that lead to a particular point in the source code. Uh, I've added support for URLs in messages, similar to what you saw on the text, terminal text-based output. And internally, lots of improvements. Um, I was, I added a, basically to make, um, I've added the tests, the tests now check that the output is valid according to the serif schema, um, which I wasn't doing before. And, uh, and to do that, I actually added a class hierarchy rather than just having a big blob of JSON values. Um, and I'm using unique pointer now to avoid memory leaks. because there were, um, So lots of internal improvements. I got a most, I have a partly written patches for, I mentioned capturing chains of include paths associated with the diagnostic to get to a location. Um, GCC can do things in macro foo, and it, it has macro, these sort of chains of macro expansions, and potentially, um, I, as I say, I have a work in progress patch that can cover, covers that, and that may or may not land for GCC 15. And similarly, um, GCC can capture um, for warnings that are coming from the middle end that this is a this function when it was inlined into this function, when it was inlined into that function, I can detect that there's a, a buffer overflow problem there, uh, and we potentially we could we could capture that as well. But that's that's not done, but it's hopefully close to doable. Talking about internal improvements to GCC, so this is much more just for GCC developers and for um, authors of GCC plugins. I mean, in my talk at Cauldron last year, I talked about this new subsystem I added called the text art, which is how basically all about doing those ASCII art diagrams or box drawing diagrams. And for GCC 15, uh, I've added a new tree widget class that makes it very, very easy to add hierarchical, to visualize hierarchical structures um, in a dump. Uh, basically, you, if you have a type that has a make dump widget uh, member function of suitable signature, there's a text art dump uh, template or a family of templates for um, dumping to standard error, dumping to a pretty printer, and dumping to a file star. And um, so, for example, inside the analyzer, here's one of the visualizations I've added. The, this is visualizing a region model, which is the analyzer's, um, it's sort of, here's a state that the analyzer has along a particular execution path. And it has a lot of sort of, it's built up from a lot of sort of objects. There's um, the store, which is, hits, simulation of what the contents of memory is, and there's constraints. There's a constraint manager which captures here, and we know that, for example, um, this doesn't equal that on this path. And so it's um, basically the tree widget thing is a very easy way of just, oh, give me a colorized you know, visualization of showing that hierarchical structure. And of course, for free, it'll also do ASCII and non-colorized and all the combinations of those, depending upon whether um, what the status of standard error is and the combined line options we mentioned before. Um, another, uh, the, the other visualization I added to the analyzer, that, so that was sort of showing the, 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 yeah, the state of the simulation along a path. And we have, for example, that frame, in frame 51, variable um, underscore six is, the, is that symbolic value, initial value, star, and it mess. And here's a visualization showing how that symbolic value is built up. 
it's the initial value of a region which is the um, initial value of that pointer valued variable within this frame on the stack. Um, and again, so that's a, um, well, I find this very useful because, you know, you've got these complicated tree-like structures that you want to see where the problem is. And again, with the um, colorized um, box drawing and um, those. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, Sidesh. Does this moment create a um, send patches. Uh, the, yeah, so, so, the, um, so Sudesh's question is, does this work on tree as well, which is the sort of very important uh, d data type inside GCC? And I have not implemented that, but it would be a very useful patch, no doubt. Uh, so if someone wants to, I can help with that. Continuing to talk about GCC internals, I've been looking at the insides of the pretty, printer for, pretty printing formatting routine. So you, I showed you one of these already, and there was like that inform, like expected percent QS, but got, or percent QE, but got blah, blah, blah. So these are used throughout um, when, how we implement warnings and, um, and, and errors. Um, you can just directly call uh, PP format. Uh, so here's an example. We'll send an, an int, a string, and a string in quotes uh, with these parameters and try and print this to a pretty printer. Previously, this was done um, just diving a bit into the, into the implementation. This, we had various text buffers. And it would basically say, oh, you've got foo colon space, and then you've got percent i, so that's, there's, there's that run of text. Then we've got an i for percent i, it's going to consume that, that parameter, and so on. So it would chop up the format string into sort of quote, um, data and control, um, as it were, um, sections. And that's sort of phase one of the formatting. And then in phase two, it would take, the, say, the percent i and the varag and sort of consume the, the varag and make a string for it. And for example, for the percent qs, the quoted string, it would take the, the string and then add quotes, but potentially also um, SGR control codes saying, color, or color this in bold on the terminal. OK, turn bold off at the end. Uh, and potentially inject the URL that I was showing you on those earlier slides, and there's, there's control codes for that. So previously, we, all of this logic was just all working in terms of char stars and text buffers, and I was running into problems with that because you, you have these text buffers and all they are are text, and um, there are some control codes that are awkward. Um, so the C++ front end, for example, has percent %h and percent %i for contrasting two different types. And uh, so that we can, for example, if they are templates that are almost but not quite the same, we can highlight the differences between those template types. And so, and to print, so to print those, you have to sort of defer printing them until you've seen both of them. Um, which is awkward. We have the ability to dump um, optimization records in JSON form to say recording like decisions about inlining versus or decisions about made by the vectorizer. And it has its own, uh, I think, percent %c for a call graph node, percent %g for a statement in the, the Gimpel representation. And uh, then I have this logic to in automatically inject URLs, and that was getting really, really messy. And finally, yeah, we have these terminal colorization and URL codes, but that's sort of all we have. And so supporting uh, Sarif has some fairly rich um, things you can do in terms of um, what, marking up the text. Uh, and, there are, and there are other formats. Uh, ooh, we could doc, doc book support anyone? I'm not sure. Um, that, um, and basically, you can't really support if all you've got is text and control codes. So uh, for GCC 15, this is in shrunk. I've added, a, there's a new header, pretty print format impl.h. There's a new like mini internal representation, um, a pretty printer tokens and pretty printer token lists. 
So what we do here in, yes, in phase one, rather than having just text buffers, we now have token lists. And it looks very similar this slide to what we had before. We have a list containing the, to the text, one text token basically in each phase. Where it gets interesting is in phase two where we substitute because now we have all these token lists containing text lists. But the final one, we've captured that there's a begin quote, then the text, then the end quote. So we've sort of captured the meaning of what we're doing at a sort of a slightly higher level. And the advantage of this is, and then we can do all this, uh, okay, we've got all these, we now put them all into one token list, and then we can do things like merging the consecutive tokens, and all that sort of logic can be done in one set of utility, shared utility functions. And um, then what, we've done, what this achieves is a sort of a separation of concerns, because we have all the different front ends and also the dump subsystem have their own sort of little mini language of what are the format codes. I mean, there's the, the, the shared ones like strings and ints, but um, the front ends add things like types and expressions, and, um, well, and the dump subsystem adds things like call graph nodes and statements. So you have these sort of client-specific format codes, and so the front end sort of is, um, has this sort of format decoder. And what we have, by having these tokens, the idea is that the, the front end's format decoder is responsible for understanding its format DSL, domain specific language. It, it's the version of the, the format language. And generating these tokens. Um, we have some shared logic for, for example, if you spot begin quote, text, end quote, the, URL, the, the auto URLifying logic got a lot simpler because I can just do that in one place rather than there's a lot, there used to be lots of really awkward cases of look at this, capture this char star, and then capture this char star, and if they're in the same buffer, compare the, yeah, yeah. Um, so that became, and then finally, the, there are multiple different output formats. So you could be doing pure text, or you could be doing text to a terminal that understands these control codes, or you could be doing to a machine-readable format like Serif, which has its own um, how, you, how you express these different concepts. And so if you, here's a um, double-free warning, or the implementation of the analyzer's double-free, where um, the warning, it has a describe final event um, virtual function implementation. And if you know what the first free was, you can say, oh, the second free or whatever function, the quote function here was here, is, is here. The first free was at, and percent at is a um, references another event in the execution path. Uh, hopefully that's fairly. Obvious, like it takes in two function names and an event ID. And after the, yes, yeah, so we do the formatting and we have the second quoted free, begin quote free, end quote, is here, the first one is uh, there. And um, you'll see that was at, and we actually got a special token type for event IDs. So we've captured at a higher level that we're talking about um, an event. Um, rather than having to sort of figure out, well, what does the text look like? And that was, yeah. And so we then can get them all into one list, and you've got that. And then, so if we're out puffing the text, we can, and here's text with formatting codes, and it will output it this way. But, and here's the fancy thing, if you're outputting to Sarif, you'll see a uh, message text, second free here, first free was it, and there's this long thing, because Serif has a way of embedding UR, UR, URIs, URLs, whatever, into, um, and so this, so this is a, you'll see that um, the second free was that the text of it is two, and the URL is Serif colon slash blah, 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 blah. That's a JSON pointer to within the Serif file itself. Saying, so you can actually reference, within this event's message is referencing another node within the Serif tree. So, you, uh, so a consumer of this can say, um, so it's this location 
that this free is here, that free is there, and they can refer to each other. So the, the um, uh, consumer of the serif, for example, if you're generating HTML, you could put an anchor in each one and then have a, a link from one to the other and sort of keep track of what the things are. So this, is, this allows this sort of very rich um, integration between the messages that we're emitting and, and, the, uh, and the output we're generating. Similarly, with the optimization records, there's, uh, uh, that's not very legible, it says inlining percent %c to percent %c with frequency blast, saying we're trying to inline this call site into that call, sorry, that call graph node into that call graph node with frequency there. And so um, inside the formatting subsystem, there's a custom token which, um, where you can add new types of token. And so I use that to say, well, this is a record from the dump file optimization record subsystem. Um, so inlining this call graph node to that call graph node with frequency and, and then that. So when that comes through into the JSON optimization record, you'll see it's yeah, inlining. And rather than just having the text get CPU ID max, blah, 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 it's also capturing that it's a sim symbol table node and it's at that source location. And for example, for um, Gimple statements, it will capture things like what's the profile data, um, is this, you know, what, what's the profile information of this statement so that you can query based on the hotness of a particular, um, yeah, you're probably most interested in the, in the code that's been called a lot. This, all of this existed, has existed for quite a few releases, by the way, but having this sort of unified um, rewrite of PP format may, has basically allowed me to consolidate and remove an awful lot of hackish stuff and into one new internal representation. Um, so the current status is, um, yeah, that, this is in shrunk and it has allowed me to simplify sort of the formatting code and it allows for much nicer uh, machine readable output. Um, one issue is that uh, this is currently only applying to the formatted text printing. If you're just doing, um, just sending um, strings and other things to a pretty printer, that part of it is still just accumulating text into a buffer. Uh, it's probably very doable to have that be a token list so we can capture things in a rich way as well. Um, so, so there's a bit of an, an annoying inconsistency between the two right now, um, but uh, well, maybe I'll fix that, I'm sure. Um, the other thing is maybe we could have other kinds of token like a begin span, end span for sort of arbitrary semantic markup. So you can say in percent %qt that this is a type, this isn't just a string, this is a type. And then if you're doing, um, for example, um, perhaps we could do HTML output and you can have a, a div or span class equals um, and then have CSS to colorize things appropriately based um, and which I think would be pretty easy to do and it would be, it, it, it would basically leverage all the, uh, the percent Q stuff we've already got um, and, and do nice output. This is of course assuming that we want to, if we want to do HTML output. <laughs> Moving on, um, lib diagnostics. Uh, there's a wiki page on our wiki talking about this. So we, we've got all this co existing code for printing diagnostics and working with diagnostics and emitting sort of either as text or as serif. And so what I've done is I've sort of wrapped that up behind a simple C API into a new shared library. And it's kind of similar to what I did with libgcc JIT way back when, um, of taking, which was sort of taking GCC's code generation code and hiding it behind a C API, um, a pretty op opaque one, I should say, um, to avoid sort of tying us down implementation-wise. And so there's a new, you have to opt in when you build or configure GCC with a dash dash enable lib diagnostics. And, um, and, and build it. Um, and this basically exposes all of this code that we've got uh, as a shared library with a, with a header. And I say, yeah, yes, you could just use fprintf to standard error, which you probably are already if you're working on a tool that emits diagnostics. Um, but if you use this, then you will get things like 
quoting of the relevant source code, underlying of ranges, the, the sort of a labeling of ranges of source code, if you like, the control flow, you can do execution paths with the control flow edges and all of that, uh, fix it hints, um, generating a patch from the fix it hints, um, yeah, logical locations versus physical locations, like rather than saying a line blah of foo.c, it's within function foo or within namespace class function and finally the, the serif output. So in terms of how am I doing the time here? Okay, you've got 15 minutes till the top of the hour. Um, so example of how we'd use this, you would make a new diagnostic manager and this is basically the, the sort of the context to the library, the thing that you, your context for talking to the library. Um, you tell it what your, what your name is, um, if you want to do serif output, because serif has a required attribute, which is what is the generator of this, of these diagnostics. Uh, and then you make, for example, a source file, uh, a, a diagnostic file star, saying, well, this file name, this source language, um, oh, we can make uh, a text sync, we'll go output to standard error, colorized if standard error is directly connected to a TTY, but not otherwise, or we can do always and never, uh, and well, let's open a text uh, a file star and uh, send serif 2.1 to it. Uh, that's actually the only version supported there. That's just there for future expansion. And then, yeah, let's make a, a location, a, that file, a particular line, and in fact, a range of columns. And then you make a diagnostic, it's an error, and then you should populate the diagnostic with, um, with data. And finally, uh, so here's where it is, uh, physical location, we'll add a fix it hint, and then you finally you finish it by sending a formatted string and the var arcs, which sort of has to be last because you can't, I don't know if there's any way of preserving var arcs, uh, you sort of have to use them there and then, ultimately. Um, so you see unknown field, uh, unknown field color, did you mean color? And, um, and, and so here I made a, it compile that to a dot out. Um, yeah, this is me running it on my laptop last night, so it's not install, it's just, oh my God. And you'll see, yeah, it's emitting, um, it's result doing the formatted printing, it's sort of, it puts stuff in bold, for example, it's finding the source code for you, quoting it, doing the underlining, showing the fixer hint, and here I did the generate patch API thing, which generates a patch from all the fixer hints on the manager, and emits that um, as you exit, for example. Um, and also here it will do serif output. So here is the, this, the uh, where were we, serif result saying, yeah, unknown field, blah, 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 with all of the, the data in machine readable form, including the, the fix it hint to me. Yeah, fixes, artifact changes, a replacement of that with that. Um, the other thing I've added is, well, um, we have all this, now that we've got a library, or I hope that there'll be a library, to, to just um, to, to work with GCC's diagnostic subsystem without bringing in all of GCC. Um, I created a command line tool, Serif Replay, and this is sort of, yes, we can serialize our diagnostics to a file, and this is the opposite, saying, well, can we load a diagnostic from a file and turn them back into text? Um, so this is a command line tool that uses libdiagnostics and basically reads the JSON and basically calls into the API and then says, give me serif output. Well, you could have other output um, then use it as a converter. And so here we are, um, yeah, serif replay of a saved serif file from the analyzer and it's replaying um, and it's showing uh, a reasonably faithful reproduction of what would have appeared on standard error uh, with colorization, events, um, quoting, and so on. There are some issues about can you find the source code and, um, in order to be able to quote it. So that's, um, I'm at version three of the patch kit, uh, which I last posted about a month ago. It, ha it doesn't have documentation yet, so we would need that, which I'll work on. Um, it has bit rotted somewhat, because I've been making a bunch of other changes to the diagnostic subsystem. Um, as I say, yeah, I have a patch for the GNU assembler to, that uses this, and potentially you could do one for the linker as well, so we would get, like, quoting the source code if you have, like, a 
um, you're calling this function but haven't, I can't find a, implement a definition of it anywhere. Um, but as it turned out, that's one of the things that has bit rotted and I need to fix um, as I was writing these slides. Uh, and it, yeah, it, there, there are probably bugs. But yeah, I would like to get this into GCC 15 because um, I think it's a useful feature. And I, I work with, in, with the analyzer, I'm generating like tens of thousands of serif files when I do a, the integration test. So it's useful for me to have a way of just looking at a serif file. Um, yeah, so basically this cycle I've focused, I, normally at this point I talk lots about the static analyzer. I added a new warning, um, which is, yeah, you're subtracting two pointers that are um, globally, yeah, the address of two global variables to compare them, and that's undefined. That's, that's basically the only thing I've done to the analyzer for GC315, but as you see, I've been sort of focusing on the diagnostic subsystem in general. And um, so m most of what I've talked about already is already in shrunk for GCC 15, and I've sort of said some things which are more experimental. Here's some more out there and experimental stuff. Um, C++ template errors. Um, uh, Cy Brand of Microsoft has posted this very nice proposal for uh, extending Serif to capture uh, sort of hierarchical structured diagnostics. And the idea is you, um, for, GCC, for C++ templates, traditionally you get these screenfuls and so on screenfuls of, of, uh, of a screed about uh, saying I can't resolve this template because of reasons. And the, the fix probably is rather than try to capture either everything or to be concise, is to catch everything but in a hierarchical way and give the user like a sort of expand collapse widgets where they can drill down into the part of the diagnostic they care about. And so Sai posted this proposal to, to the, uh, the C++ standards um, thing and also to the Serif body um, that uses Serif to capture the templates. I have a prototype implementation of this for G, G++, I suppose, the C++ front end. Um, and it's currently really ugly. Um, basically, to cap so rather than having a flat, I tried this and it didn't work, I tried that, it didn't work. It actually, cap this is obviously debugging code. It captures the hierarchy of what it tried and why it was rejected. Um, and the, um, in like this concept, people isn't satisfied or this, I couldn't satisfy this, this conversion doesn't exist like, so it just sort of goes through all the candidates, but it captures that in the hierarchy of, of that. Now, some questions. What should that look like? Um, I don't know how to make, I don't know how to make it compliant with the, the GNU standards for diagnostics, for example, um, or how to make it work nicely in, in the Emacs compile buffer, um, which is sort of what I use. Um, there's, how do we rep represent that in the, at the serif level? Um, like size proposal had one way of doing it. It kind of works. I have some concerns it might, but anyway, that's going too into the weeds. And then what IDEs would support it? Um, they ha Microsoft have an implementation of this in their compiler and in VS Code, but currently the proposal in terms of how the two talk to each other uses a very Windows-specific um, RPC mechanism. Um, and so obviously we would want to generalize that to not just work on Windows. Um, I'm also looking at, so currently um, we have a global diagnostic context inside GCC which has a single pretty printer and we have a single output format, uh, either text or serif. And so you can do, basically you can only do one thing in one output format at a time. But it would be really nice if we could both, say for example, write colorized text, the standard error, and also emit serif somewhere. And uh, so it's sort of been looking at, can we have multiple output sinks for diagnostics, as it were? Um, yeah, you can in lib, di well, uh, you can in lib diagnostics because I'm, we don't have this global variable and there are reasons. Um, and um, so I've, I've got an experimental patch that sort of converts it to a vector of dynamic output formats and so multiple sinks, and then the, the global diagnostic context pretty printer, we instead have a pretty printer per output sync. 
Um, but unfortunately, there are lots and lots of places inside GCC. Yeah. Sorry, I'm running out of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so that um, HTML output, I've got a patch that adds that as an output format, but I kind of dare not commit it because then I'll get bug reports because everyone will want HTML a different way, so I don't know. I've also got a patch that um, will send diagnostics via RPC, similar to the one Microsoft had. Um, and, but I'm not quite sure how that should work, but it's kind of fun. You run GCC in one window and the diagnostics appear in another, um, potentially could be sent to an IDE. Again, it's sending the, the SARAF that way. Um, so yeah, um, I'm running out of time. So that's my talk. Uh, questions, uh, Sidesh. Yeah, we've got um, yeah. three minutes till the top of the hour, and so I sorry I didn't leave much, didn't really leave any time for. So this is this is probably more of an internals question. Uh, so you've got pretty printers, mm -hmm. uh, the pretty printing class, which which you're basically transforming from making it a simple text buffer to like giving meaning to the diagnosis, yes. right? Yeah. And at the very end, you have serif as a format, which mm -hmm. already has given meaning, meaning to uh, diagnostics or, or attempts to do that. Mm -hmm. So have you thought about using the serif object model, not necessarily the output, but object model on in the beginning so that that way you have this one kind of descriptive object model, which you can then transform to whatever you want. Yeah, so the, uh, so the, yeah, the question is to, basically, can we capture things in the serif object model earlier? Um, the issue is that with that is that serif as a, doesn't seem right now to have as much support for inline markup as I would like. Um, it, there is a way you, it supports Markdown, uh, but only a, only a somewhat limited subset of Markdown, uh, as far as I understand it. Um, that's what I hope to do. I mean, I, I wish they did restructure text instead, but uh, they pick Markdown, and that's I, I will stop ranting. Um, any other questions, uh, Jakob? So you talked about an option to, to select between Unicode and ASCII. Is that meant just for the ASCII art? Or, uh, I mean, uh, there are things where, where you emit um, parts of diagnostics directly from the source code, like uh, hash error, hash warning, mm -hmm. static assert, and, and so on. And so, so the question is, if we should re-encode, uh, re because we, we know the source code is, is probably in a Unicode, UTF-8, and we shouldn't re recode uh, the parts of the user parts of diagnostics so that user can see it. Uh, sorry? C++ could have Unicode. Yes, so um, you raised some very interesting questions, and I'm not quite sure the correct answer <laughs> in terms of yeah, um, you full Unicode support in the in the source language itself. Um, I believe ultimately we're turning things into UTF-8 internally. Uh, I hope, <laughs> uh, and um, and the the Sarah, for example, we convert. Um, there are, one of the bugs I fixed is there's a, if, the, if there's a bad encoding in the SARA file, how do we report this is not encodable in, as UTF-8, or is it not, this is not validly encoded, and, and encode that diagnostic in a validly encoded SARA file, and we do handle that case at least, I know. All right, I think we're, are we out of time? Uh, yeah, we are running out of time, that's my job, so okay. I'd like to thank uh, yeah. for a very nice uh, talk and okay. work. All right. So, yeah. Thanks.